Hey everyone, Joseph here, and today is day four of the last counting down, the last 20 days till my exam, and today I took a next step practice exam, which uh, I just wanted to briefly go over and talk to you about what I really enjoy about next step, and hopefully I'll keep this one short because it's getting late. Um, so today I took the full length exam too, which I think was actually probably a little bit easier than the first one, not quite sure, or for whatever reason, I just did a little bit better on cars today. But here's my score. Uh, yeah, I mean, my, my cars went up a little bit, but then my bio went down. So overall, it stayed about the same. My scores aren't going up or down, and that's what I heard that's characteristic of Next Step. But really what's great about Next Step that I thought is that, one, they compare your answers to um, other people's scores. So essentially, it's like when you look at a question, you can tell exactly what the distribution of the scores are. And I know that Next Step might be mad <laughs> at me for putting something like this up, but I just really like their question. Um... Their layout is really pretty, and you know when I read the question, they have they keep and maintain the same highlighting on the left. The only thing I would say that might be that is a little bit annoying about their exam is that every time you go to the next question, it refreshes the page. But I mean, overall, everything looks great. Like the the answer is clearly highlighted here, and then they talk about the answer explanation, and then they look at the distribution. So I thought this was really important because when I see questions that have really low distribution scores, um. Or rather, when I see a question that is split between two answers, um, sometimes my answer wasn't the other choice. So then it gives me pause. It's like, okay, I can stop and consider um, what was what were those other people thinking about when they came to the question? And what Next Step also does really well is that usually, okay, maybe this question was too easy where they only went over one answer. But here, let me let's see if I can. Uh, my face is blocking here. So I'm going to move this real fast. All right. And moved it back. Okay, so for question two, oh, this one's easy too. Okay, so usually, usually they go over why different answers are wrong. Okay, here we go. So for a more difficult question, let me put this back. For a more difficult um, graph, what they did was they said, okay, so we're gonna take you step by step and talk you through each of the answers A, B, C, D. And personally, I just barely recalled what homotropic regulation was. I still don't even know what it is now. I think I looked it up. It was something like allosteric effects within a um, within an active site. So there has to be multiple active sites on the enzyme, so that the active site of a different um, a different globule, a different um, what's the word for it, uh, subunit is acting allosterically on the active site that you're interested in, and the active site that you're interested in has an affinity given by this curve. So that's what I recall. And as a lot of you may or may not know, um, hemoglobin binds cooperatively, cooperatively. So essentially, as it binds more more oxygen, it actually gains higher affinity because the, um, the overall subunit actually relaxes a little bit. But I, when I was taking the exam, I didn't know what homotropic regulation was. I only heard of that then maybe like once or twice in one of the Anki cards or something. It was just like, went over my head. So what I thought was really helpful was that they had B here. So notice that when I was doing the question that I like to cross out all the answers that I didn't think were the right answers. And that way that reinforces in my mind, like I said in my previous videos, that if you do get an answer right, sometimes it's because one, you recognize the answer, but two, also because you can eliminate all the other poor choice answers. So I remember that um, I saw C, dissolved oxygen formed a chain of atoms that is easier for hemoglobin to bind. And the first thing that I thought was, okay, so oxygen is not going to form um, a chain of atoms. So oxygen itself is diatomic, so it's going to be O2. And I remember that like somewhere that, oh, there's something wrong, that it happens to tend to be like a radical, but I do not ever recall oxygen acting as a chain of atoms. So I crossed that one out immediately. Um, then I looked at B, because B looked fairly wrong from my perspective, the primary structure of hemoglobin is changed by oxygen binding. So this is one of those answers that just sounds kind of good, but in hindsight, it's like, oh, if I pick that, then I actually just made a big mistake. So everything is good about that, except that instead of primary, they should have quaternary, because the quaternary structure of hemoglobin, since it's a multi-subunit enzyme, unlike myoglobin, is changed by oxygen binding. So that's a answer that if you were reading through the question quickly, might have missed. Um, and finally, dissolved oxygen in the blood starts to increase pH. 
So this one's also a tricky question. So what they're actually looking for is dissolved carbon dioxide in the blood serves to increase pH because CO2, if you recall, shifts the uh, equilibrium to CO2 plus H plus becomes uh, carbonic acid. Or sorry, CO2 plus water becomes carbonic acid, which is um, dis dissolution. It goes into dissolution. And I, don't, I don't think the right word is dissolved, but it breaks into um, H plus ion, which essentially decreases the pH and yeah, so oxygen, I believe, doesn't have an effect. So usually what I do is I go through the question and then I'd reiterate to myself what I thought the answers were. And in this case, I see that a lot of people picked choice B. So then I go back, I looked at choice B and I, was, and I remember that primary structure was the main problem with the answer. And then what I really like about next step is that they go over every single um, answer when it comes to like more difficult questions. So yeah, so anyways, I thought the next time exam was pretty good. Um, actually, I think the cars today was a little bit easier than normal. I didn't really find myself tripping up, which is why maybe um, my car score is higher than average because usually I'm used to getting like 126 on the, on the practice exam. But yeah, anyways, so good luck, guys. This is day four. Um, still stressing out a bit, but looking forward to hearing from you all what you think. And if you try next step or you have any other recommendations for me, um, yeah, I'll be glad to hear it. So anyways, I'll catch you all later. Bye-bye.